On a Saturday night, on the 27th of February 1999, Michelle Bright was a 17-year-old schoolgirl who lived in the small rural 19th century gold rush town of Galgong, which is near Mudgee in New South Wales, Australia. She was described as being cheeky and adventurous and wanted to one day become a veterinary nurse. She had just finished attending a friend's 15th birthday party and was later seen by friends being dropped off outside a commercial hotel along the main street of Gulgong at 12.45am near the corner of Herbert and Main Streets. She vanished that night and was never seen alive again. Her disrobed body was dumped and discovered three days later in long grass next to train tracks on Barney's Reef Road, less than a kilometre from her home. Local investigators, together with detectives, conducted numerous inquiries at the time and over the past two decades. However, no one has been charged in connection with the case. In the year 2000, the New South Wales government offered a $100,000 reward for information that would lead to the arrest and conviction of those responsible for taking Michelle's life. As no new leads were received, the reward increased to $500,000 in the year 2009. Despite the reward, the investigation stalled somewhat. On the 10th of August 2020, the police declared the reward for information was eventually increased to $1 million to assist with their inquiries. Michelle's mother Lorraine begged the public for answers. Investigators appealed to anyone who may have recalled seeing a red XF Falcon wagon in the Golgon area around the time of Michelle's disappearance. They were urged to come forward, which they believe may have been responsible for the horrendous offence. Almost immediately after the appeal, the police received a tip-off. Lorraine said she had no idea someone would come forward so quickly with information and was shocked. Following the night of the appeal, at 9.30pm, detectives arrested a 53-year-old Craig Henry Rumsby. They charged the former abattoir worker who was on the outskirts of town at the time with taking Michelle's life. Craig lives in Greater Sydney, but he was almost 300 kilometres away in Mudgee, which is just a 30-minute drive south of Galgong on the night of his arrest. Police received information that he was attending Mudgee, so when they received that information, they stopped him and arrested him. Craig started having heart palpitations, and he was taken back to the police station. At the time of the offence, Craig lived two doors down from Michelle, and the kids went to school together. Despite living in Windsor in recent years, which is northwest of Sydney, he has a suburb in Kings Langley as his fixed address. When he was first interviewed by police, he allegedly told detectives he travelled to Golgong on the night of Michelle's disappearance and had played cards until 3am with a friend in the neighbouring town of Cook's Gap. Just prior to his arrest, Craig posted on a Facebook group called Justice for Michelle Bright that read, it's so sad they haven't caught a killer. Michelle was like a sister to me. I feel sorry for the family. Craig became a person of interest after they learned he had been the suspect of indecently assaulting and choking an 18-year-old woman on the 1st of January 1998, not far from where Michelle disappeared from a year earlier. Superintendent Doherty said police had obtained a lot of evidence in relation to Craig over their 21-year investigation, but the reward had allowed them to focus their inquiries as a result of the recent couple of days, we were able to obtain evidence that will allege in court strongly implicates this person has been involved in taking her life, he said. The rain stated that she was ecstatic with the breakthrough. I'm overwhelmed, that's all I can say, after 21 years. Craig attended court on the 19th of August 2020 and will remain in custody without bail until his next court appearance on the 21st of October this year. It is hoped the arrest can bring some closure to a family which has suffered immense heartache for over two decades. John Mike Kreitz was born in Wiesbaden, Germany on July 29, 1962, and his family settled in Aurora, Colorado in the mid-70s. In 1992, John moved from Aurora, Colorado to Helena, Montana. He was a loner and loved the outdoors. He respected nature and wildlife and enjoyed hunting. After falling in love with Montana during several hunting trips, he worked hard, saved his money, and fulfilled his dreams by purchasing 80 acres of land outside of Helena. 
He built a home with no running water and no electricity, living alone with his wolf dogs that were 87% wolf. This beautiful piece of land would have been paradise had people just obeyed no trespassing signs and respected the land as he did. On the 26th of June, 2011, Mike was 48 years of age at the time when he vanished from his property and was nowhere to be seen. In October 2011, a horrific discovery was made. Body parts were found in garbage bags near McDonald Pass outside Helena. They had been buried very shallow and on the side of the road. It seemed that wild animals, perhaps coyotes, had dug the remains from the dirt, possibly attracted by the pungent smell. DNA samples were taken and sent off for analysis. It wasn't until January 2012 that it was confirmed to have been Mike's remains. Further searches of the area were conducted. Then, in September 2012, the additional remains, including his skull, were found west of the Continental Divide, near Elliston, which was several miles away. For nine years, the perpetrator's identity remained unknown. There were a few neighbors in the area. Mark and Gloria Flora were a couple that Mike got along well with. However, Mike had run-ins due to road access. One person was particularly nasty. He was a 66-year-old retired military man named Leon Ford of Oak Harbor, Washington. He owned 15 acres of land north of Mike's property. The two men were involved in a bitter land dispute in the years leading up to Mike's disappearance. There was a fork in the road, leading to Leon's undeveloped property that crossed land. It was owned by Mike, who installed a metal gate across this portion of the road because he contested that it was not a legal easement. Leon wanted to use an old logging road on Mike's property as a shortcut to his own, but Mike refused. This angered Leon, and he started making threats to Mike's life. Leon arranged a meeting with Mike on the 26th of June, 2011, which would have been around 9 o'clock in the morning. And after this, Mike was never seen alive again. Later the next day, Mark and Gloria Flora spotted a wolf dog in their yard. I saw that in fact it was Mike's wolf. I knew it because it had a chain, said Mark. I went back to the house and instantly I had a terrible feeling. I had known Mike for 11 years and his dogs had never been out. A search of Mike's house turned up no signs of violence, but no signs of Mike either. This is when an extensive search for Mike began. An affidavit of probable cause was filed in Lewis and Clark County Justice Court on the 14th of August, 2020. According to the affidavit, lab tests conducted in July 2013 concluded that the bullet embedded in Mike's skull matched a bullet used in a gun seized at Leon's Oak Harbor home in October 2012. Both sets of remains were wrapped in a specific type of cable tie that were last produced in September 2011. They were available only through specific distributors and had to be special ordered, so they were not available for purchase from the inventory of the distributor store. Investigators subpoenaed Chugash, a contractor doing business at an Oak Harbor Air Base where Leon was working at the time in 2011. Platt Electric Records indicate that Chugash had purchased the same type of cable ties, and Leon had removed them from its Oak Harbor warehouse on February 16, 2011. But the records don't list a work order number identifying the project for which Leon planned to use the materials. Investigators also allege that Leon withdrew a box of heavy-duty trash bags from the Chugash warehouse inventory on June 27, 2011. Leon's vacation slips and video records from neighbor's surveillance footage indicated that Leon was in Helena that day and not at work at the airbase. Authorities declined to discuss the timeline of the subpoena that was issued, but it was said it took time to document the facts needed to build a strong enough case to lead to a conviction. At 10 a.m. on the morning of the 14th of August, 2020, Leon Ford was arrested pending court hearings in Oak Harbor, Washington, and was charged with taking Mike's life and tampering with evidence. Perry Griffin was a 37-year-old native of Early County, Georgia. He was an employee of Panhandle Converters and Scrap, which is a recycling business located in Dotham, Alabama. Perry was married to his wife, Ginger, for 11 and a half years, 
and had three children. During the dark early morning hours of the 26th of June 2007, he was going to go out of town to purchase items for the company. Harry was preparing to leave the business with $35,000 cash for a company out of town trip. This wasn't the first time he had left with large sums of money. As Perry was preparing to leave the parking lot, two armed suspects confronted him. CCTV footage captured two of the suspects physically restraining Perry and trying to take him to another location. It appeared Perry resisted. During a physical struggle, a suspect shot Perry and ended his life. The two suspects fled from the scene on foot after collecting the large sum of money in Perry's possession. It is believed the third suspect was waiting nearby in a vehicle. At the time of the incident, investigators worked earnestly around the clock on the case. Evidence was collected at the scene. Persons of interest were developed and countless interviews were conducted. The case had remained unsolved and multiple investigators had worked tirelessly to bring an end to the case. Due to the lack of sufficient evidence, they were unable to do so. The FBI and the US Marshals Gulf Coast Regional Fugitive Task Force worked meticulously with the Dothan Police Department in trying to solve the case. In June of 2020, new information surfaced. Several people were re-interviewed, as well as some new witnesses, and the original cases were diligently reviewed. As a result of this recent investigation, and with the efforts during the original investigation, sufficient evidence had been gathered to allow for the arrest warrants to be obtained for the three suspects. 47-year-old Jesse Jerome Swain and 48-year-old Kevin Sean Thornton, both Dothan residents, were charged with robbery and taking Perry's life. They were both 34 and 35 years of age respectively at the time of the offence, and both were employees at Panhandle Converters and are held without bail. Thornton originally went to prison in 2010 for an assault of a woman but only served five years at the time. 30-year-old Kendrick Fitzgerald Bryant was charged with the same offence. Bryant is currently in an Alabama prison. He's been in and out of prison over the years for robbery offences. Bryant was 17 years of age at the time and his connection is through Swain. All three men remain behind bars and more information will be disclosed as further court hearings unfold. Ginger never believed the case would ever be solved. She forgives the trio and is grateful to finally find closure in the case.